Have you ever found yourself in total existential crisis mode and you're like, what is going on with the universe and God and myself? Well, this video will help explain a lot of that. In this video, I'm going to talk about the trinity of self. So this video is going to help answer a lot of those questions as we dive into who we really are. When we understand who we really are, that unlocks so much in terms of the truth of God, the truth of the universe, and the truth of everything. Okay, let's cut right to the chase. Who are you? I want you to ask yourself that question. Who am I? And I think the vast majority of the people watching this would answer that question in this sort of way. I am John Rainey. I'm from Wisconsin. I currently live in California. I went to a Bible school. I have a Bible degree. That's where I met my wife, Jenna. We have a beautiful son named Miles, and I like to snowboard and do yoga. I'm a two on the Enneagram, I'm INFJ on Myers-Briggs, I'm a manifesting generator on human design, and I'm a Gemini. This is how a lot of people would answer that question, by their roles, their responsibilities, the things that they do, or, or the work that they do. But the purpose of this video is really to show you that that's not who you really are. Now, I mentioned in the intro that there is a trinity of self. In the trinity of self, the first layer is the ego, is the human. It's the, it's the human version of you. And I would say that that's not who you really are. Um, not to say that that's bad inherently, but that's not who you deeply are. When we identify ourselves as the ego, we are, it's, it's everything associated with the human experience. So my name, where I live, the people that I'm closest to, the work that I do and all of that, that's the human layer, that's the ego layer of who you are and that's not who you really are. Think of it like this. If you're watching this and you're married, you were you before you were married. Um, if you're a parent, you were you before you had a child. So if you take away these different roles and responsibilities, if you keep taking those layers away, you'll find that you're still you. You can take all of those things away. You can take your own name away. If I changed my name to Bob, I'm still me. These are all like these human traits and characteristics that isn't who we really are. The, the five-year-old John that looked in the mirror is the same John that looks into the mirror today, even though we're completely different people. So what is that? How do you explain that? And what that is, is there is a consciousness that is experiencing the human experience. So all of the, all of the ways you identify yourself, maybe it's your role, it's your responsibility, your profession or whatever, that is a part of the human experience. That's not who you really are, it's the human experience. Who you really are pertains to the second and third part of the trinity of self. But um, before I get into those specifically, maybe more broadly speaking, it's the conscious awareness. There is a consciousness that goes beyond your temporary human form, your human existence. There is a consciousness there that is experiencing the human experience. All these memories that you've collected and these roles and responsibilities and passions and all these things, you can jam those together into a human package, but if you take all of them away, you're still there, you're still you. You're not just a collection of memories, you're not just a collection of events or the things that you do or the people that you associate with. There is something else there and that is the consciousness, the conscious awareness. This is the spirit that is behind everything that you are experiencing. But for this first layer, for this trinity of self, for the human layer, the way that I view it is that this is just a vessel, that the body is a temple. This is the material that is housing the immaterial, I, and which, which I would say the spirit or the soul, we're gonna get into that, Broadly speaking, that's who you really are. That is the consciousness that is, be, that is beyond temporary human form. But the human is just experiencing life. 
experiencing life to the fullest is learning and growing and loving and making mistakes and learning from them and growing and, and all of these things. But it's just that, it's the human experience. So the second layer of the Trinity is the soul. And the soul is on a very wild spiritual journey. This is an individual essence of who you really are. I believe you've been on a very wild journey that has experienced many different human experiences. When you take on an incarnation, a human incarnation, you are here to learn, to spiritually grow, to love, to spread conscious awareness to the planet, to live life to the fullest, and all these beautiful things. But the soul, that's like the individual immaterial essence of who you are. A lot of this is explained in the video that I did that talks about the journey of souls, this book by Michael Newton, and I kind of walk through what happens after you die, your experience in the spirit home, and what happens before you come back to take on another incarnation. So if you're interested on that, on like what happens in between lives, then I'll link that video below, you can check that out. But that's what I'm referring to with this second layer of self, is this individual soul that's on this wild spiritual journey, taking on many different human incarnations in order to learn and grow and spiritually ascend. And when I say spiritually ascend, I mean we're in this cycle, this uh, life, death, rebirth cycle, and when we ascend high enough, we, we eventually ascend out of this cycle. And then we are just in the spirit home. But even when we arrive to our spirit home and we're there out of this cycle of life, death, rebirth, we're still spiritually ascending, ultimately to total union with source, with God, with the creator. But in understanding this is who we really are, for me, it has brought tremendous meaning to my life. I'm here with a greater purpose. It's, it motivates me so much to live this life to the absolute fullest, to do the very best that I can in everything that I do, and learn my spiritual life lessons. So the second layer of the Trinity is really the individual consciousness experience. The third layer of the Trinity is much bigger than that. That is what I would call pure consciousness or Christ consciousness or consciousness in general, like whatever you wanna call it. Or another word you could call it is spirit with a capital S, spirit. This is the limitless, expansive, eternal, divine consciousness that is the source of all love, life, and goodness. And this is the core to who we really are. So there's this creator this eternal consciousness that is who you are and it's who I am. But we're just different living expressions of the same spirit, of the same consciousness. If that's true, that is beautiful. That is where I believe unconditional love comes from. Because if you think about it, if you and I are the exact same, we're not separate beings. Like this, this is, these are just temples. These are just, these physical bodies are just temples. It's the material housing the immaterial. But if you and I are the same consciousness, that's where you get unconditional love from. Because when you see someone on the street or your neighbor, it's just like you're seeing a different expression of yourself. So like if you see someone that's down and out, you should be compelled to help that person because that's you. There is no more hatred, there's no more bigotry, there's no more sexism, there's no more, there's no more hatred or anything like that of any kind because you and I are the same. We're all the same. We all share the same spirit. We're just different living expressions of the same creator spirit. So when you identify as, you know, I'm not John. I like that's not who I really am. That's my human experience. But really who I am is this consciousness, this limitless, expansive consciousness. That's who I am, that's who you are. Okay, well now I've untapped unconditional love for everyone. I have also untapped inner peace. This is the source of all peace. So when the human experience is going through something very, very difficult, 
For me, this is my personal experience. If I'm going through something really difficult, I can hit the pause button and say, why is this difficult? Let's say I'm hurt by something and I'm identified with ego, then it's gonna just get worse and I'm gonna stew on it, I'm gonna be frustrated and it's just gonna get worse and worse and that is an example of how that road leads to hell. But if I'm identified, if I believe that my true self is this limitless consciousness that is the source of all love, life and goodness, and I go through something that's really difficult and I'm, and I'm hurt by something, then I hit the pause button and I'm like, who's hurt? What is this hurt? Oh, John is hurt. The, hu the first layer of the Trinity, the human, that ego is taking a hit right now. That's not who I really am. That's not who I identify with. I'm this limitless consciousness that's the source of all love, life, and goodness. This provides tremendous peace. In any difficult situation, to detach yourself from the ego and identify with this consciousness, whew, that changes the game. I can take all challenges and say, that doesn't serve me because who I really am is this consciousness that is, is love, life, and goodness. And when you identify with love, life, and goodness, man, you have unconditional love, you have inner peace, and you have an unbelievable well of energy, of life energy. We think about energy often in terms of like filling your energy with like food, like getting proper nourishment and getting proper sleep and this energizes you, but there's more than that. There is more than that. When you are extremely excited about anything, you get this crazy boost of energy. That didn't come from food or sleep, that came from the core of who you really are, which is the source of all life. It's the source of all energy, which is such a beautiful thing, it's an amazing thing. So identifying with this consciousness, it comes with a tremendous amount of benefits. That untaps unconditional love, inner peace, energy, and so much more. So there's a lot of benefits, but you know, maybe I'll share a little bit more on heaven and hell. In terms of like afterlife destination, I don't believe in hell. Again, that, that's addressed in this other video. But I do believe in hell in the sense that when you are identified with your ego, that is the part of you that gets hurt, upset, frustrated with absolutely anything. All roads lead to hell when you identify with the human version of you. Again, the human version of you is a beautiful thing. It's your temple. It's your experience that you're having to live life to the fullest and experience love and life and joy and all this beautiful stuff. But if you identify that as self, okay. Well, now you're gonna get upset at your spouse, at your kids, at your friends, at your family, with your work and everything is going to attack you. You're gonna get mad. You'll be frustrated, you'll be sad, you'll be bitter, resentment, and all these things. All roads lead to hell when you identify with your ego. But if you identify as pure consciousness, that is the source of all love, life, and goodness, that cannot be negatively impacted. This is the eternal consciousness of creation. That is not going to be damaged by a, a hurtful comment from your spouse or your neighbor or whatever, whatever. That is perfect and pure and infinite and all love, all life. And so when you identify with that, that is heaven. <laughs> when you have deep desire for God and you sit in meditation and you focus on God and this consciousness, what's gonna happen is you'll be overwhelmed with peace. And that right there, is the door to the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of heaven. That is love, life, and goodness. That is total peace. When you identify with the ego, the ego is fueled by negativity and selfishness and pride and all of these things that are really undesirable, but are these things that lead to hellish experience, very literally. That is because you are identifying with this temporary human experience, but that's not who you are. You're so much more than that. You're, you're a soul, you're an individual soul on a pretty amazing, spectacular, wild spiritual journey, but you are also 
more broadly speaking, this limitless, expansive, eternal, divine consciousness that's a source of all love, love, and goodness. You know, I spent the better part of my entire life a deeply committed Christian. I have a Bible degree from a Bible school. I was a pastor for six years, and I've gone on a wild spiritual journey to get to where I am now. I also have a video on that. I'll link that below if you're interested on my journey and how I arrived here. But getting to this place of proper self-identification has been extraordinary. Um, it has been, and I'm gonna come out with more videos on this, but like I've experienced many miracles since, since making this identification shift. These miracles that have taken my relationship with certain people from resentment to forgiveness and detachment to pure, unconditional love and gratitude. That's no joke. Now you may be wondering, how do you know? What is that? How could you possibly know that this is right? And to that, I would answer, it's pure intuition. My source for truth is life filtered through intuition. I've read quite a bit on like Christianity and on like this topic as well, like Eckhart Tolle, Michael Singer, Alan Watts, Ram Dass, these sorts of things. I filter all of that through my God-given intuition. When I made the spiritual decision to trust my intuition, I freed myself from a mental prison and now I can feel what is right. I think a really good starting place in coming to believe this is truth is answering that question, who am I? Are you really just a collection of memories and events? and like these roles and responsibilities, take all of that away and you're still you. What is that? What else could that possibly be? And so the best way I define it is, first of all, it's your individual soul experience, but then also more broadly speaking, it is the spirit essence of who we are. But if you have questions on this, please comment below. If you want further explanations on what I believe in terms of self and God and universe, please drop those comments below so I know what videos to make in the future that directly caters to what you wanna hear. If you're interested in reading more about this, my book recommendations, some things that have really helped me, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer was a big one for me. Um, the Power of Now and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, really, really massively influential in my beliefs on all of this. Polishing the Mirror by Ram Dass is also an amazing book that's really similar with a little bit of a different spin. So those are some really, really good starters for you. Let me just pause here. I just wanna say this. You are so beautiful. And it's not because of anything external. It's not because of the body that you have or the things that you do. You are beautiful, you are love. You are loved and you are love. And that is because the core of who you really are. Our beauty and love comes from the inside, for real. It's not anything external. A lot of people like to agree with that, but a lot of people actually don't believe that, but it's true. You are beautiful, you are loved, and that all goes deep within to the core of who you are and the core of who I am. We are one, we're just different living expressions of the same spirit. And that's a beautiful thing. I hope that you have an absolutely lovely day and I will see you in the next video.